Good evening, and welcome to this month's Facebook live chat with me, Dr. Knowlton, your superintendent. I'm so glad that you joined us tonight, and I'm very excited about the guests that we have joining us in the room. I'm also excited about the topics that we'll be discussing this evening. After we wrap up our final topic, we'll switch to a question and answer session. So if you have questions, stick around and we'll make sure we get those answered. Our first topic tonight is about the bond. Tonight's going to be just an overview, but there's going to be more information on our website at communityisdbond.com. I will also be doing full presentations on the bond at town hall meetings and other public appearances through March and April. If you have questions, make sure that you let us know. As we talk through the bond, I want to kind of go through and give you some additional information that you may not have at this point. We're going to talk through the reasons for the bond, the reasons that we're here um, having this conversation. So we started having some concern about the things that are coming. Right now it's projected that we'll have 7,500 homes in the next five years built in our district. In 2023, we will be over capacity in all of our campuses. And in the next five years, we'll have over 6,000 students enrolled in our district. We needed to do something to plan for all of this growth. And so we um, put together a long range facilities planning committee and they came up with what they thought would be the plan. And they presented that to the board and last week our board called for a bond election on May the 7th of this year. If you'd like to see exactly what happened during that planning process, you can go to communityisd.org slash LRFPC and you can view the videos of the meetings that we've had with our long range planning committee. First question I guess that a lot of people have or need to understand is what is a bond? What are we looking at when we talk about a bond election? Our school board voted to call for a bond on May the 7th for $650 million, broken down into three propositions. I'm going to talk to you a little, bit, a little bit about each of those propositions, and then if you have questions, feel free to put those in the chat or wait for our question and answer time. We first have Proposition A. Proposition A. Proposition A is $595 million of that $650 million. With that proposition, the district would build four new elementary campuses, two new middle school campuses. It would double the size of the high school to get us to a capacity of 2,100 high school students. We would do renovations of McClendon and Neesmith. There would be a new ag facility built, new support facilities built, uh, specifically, we would need a new transportation center. We would also purchase land for new campuses. And then the only personnel that's legally allowed to be in bond funds is also built, in, built into this bond proposal, and that's a project manager. That would be a school district employee whose sole purpose and job would be to oversee all of these pr projects um, and construction going on in the district. The second proposition is Prop B. It's for $19 million of the $650 million. That proposition is for stadium renovations. It would include um, parking, expanding the stadium capacity, a press box, more restroom, and getting us to ADA compliance. We would keep our current track that, is, that we just had redone over the last year and we would make our improvements around that new track. Prop C, Proposition C, is the last of the three that you have to vote on, and it's $35 million of the $650 million. It is a full-length field indoor facility. It could be used by fine arts, cheer, dance, all sports teams, PE classes, archery, outdoor education, field days, Anything that we would normally hold outside could be moved into this indoor facility. It could also be an alternative site for graduation in inclement weather. A lot of people have questions about how you vote on a bond. And so tonight I just wanted to clarify that each of these propositions will be listed on the ballot and you will have the choice of voting yes or no 
on each of the propositions. Or you can vote uh, on, on, you can choose not to vote on them if you don't want to. One of the reasons that um, we are in the situation we are with a bond proposal is because of the projections that we have for enrollment across the district. Our latest enrollment project projection for this year is 3,479 students, which is projected for the end of this year. We've already beat that at 3,492 students on March the 1st. We're projected to enroll 3,953 students next year, but that was based off of our fall 21 numbers, and the new projections call for us to be over 4,000 students when we open the doors in August. We could easily hit 10,000 students or more before the end of the decade. So there's some questions that's been coming in and being discussed, and so I wanna provide you some factual information um, and answers to these questions. One of the questions that we've been asked is who sets our tax rates? So I wanna tell you a little bit about the tax rates that the school district has. We have one tax rate that is divided into two sections. We have an I and S section, which is interest and sinking, sinking that is set by our debt. It cannot go over 50 cents per $100 by law. So there's a lot of question right now about the district increasing that tax rate over the next few years. What I want everyone to understand is that it is at the highest level that we are legally allowed for it to be. So it would not go up. Our M&O rate is the other part of our tax rate and that rate is set by TEA. It has been lowered over the last two years and they have already told us they are planning to lower that rate again this year. So then the question becomes, if this isn't a tax increase, why will the ballot say this is a tax increase? There was a law passed in 2019 that says all ballots for school bond elections must include this language, quote, this is a tax increase. So while your tax rate will not increase, and so the, any increase that you would see would not be an increase of that rate, we are required to put that language on the ballot because the, your actual taxes could increase over time if this extends the debt. You could also see a change in your tax rate if your evaluation or your appraisal of your property changes. That is not controlled by the school district. Another question that we've had come in is, are we going into $650 million in debt if the bond passes? And the answer is no. So there's not a bus or a truck that's going to arrive the day after a bond election with $650 million in cash for the district to spend. When we ask for the district ask you to vote yes or no on whether um, the district can have the permission or the allowance of being, to go, being able to go out and sell bonds up to $650 million. It's over a certain time period, it's not all at once. So we would look at our property evaluations annually. We would also look at, at our growth and the market and then decide how much of that $650 million would be sold and, it, and when it would be sold. This first year, um, projections are showing that we probably will sell $140, $150 million the first year if the bond passes. And then it would be evaluated the next year to see is the growth there? Are the evaluations there? Do we have the financial capacity as a district to go out for more bonds? If the answer is yes, then the school district would sell additional bonds, but only if that growth and evaluation is there. Another question comes from that same um, line, and that is, will Community ISD sell the full bond allowance if the growth slows? And the answer is no. Um, our financial advisor will be working with us each year if the bond passes um, to decide whether we can continue to go out for these bonds or if we need to slow down in, in going out for bonds or if we need to eliminate 
going out for a bond. So the only way we will continue to go up to the $650 million would be if the capacity, the financial capacity is there and if the growth is there so there is a need for these facilities. I've also been asked several times what happens if the bond doesn't pass and so I want you to know um, exactly what we have as a plan for um, going forward if the if the bond doesn't pass. We are getting the growth. The growth is coming. We're projected to have 800 new students every year for the next several years. Uh, this year we've increased by 673 students since the first day of school. So we know the growth is there and we ha will have to have facilities to house those students. So we will add portable buildings um, this year um, at one of our campuses because we will be over capacity. If the bond does not pass, we will continue with that same process or procedure and we will have to actually add portable buildings to each of our campuses. Uh, the portable buildings will be, have to be paid for out of our maintenance and operation funds. So that's our daily operation funds. We cannot use INS funds to pay for those portable buildings. Currently, 75% of our maintenance and operation funds goes to salaries. So as we start to pay for portables, that is the budget that we would take the money out of um, to, to pay for that. Another question a lot of people have asked me is, how do we vote? How do we voice our opinion? How do we have input in this election? So I want to give you a few dates. The first thing that I think is really important is that you have to be registered to vote by April the 7th to be able to vote in this election. We have a lot of new people moving into our district, a lot of people with new houses that have a lot of things on their plate and they're really just getting accustomed to being here so we want to make sure we're encouraging all of our new community members to get out and register to vote. Early voting starts on April the 25th and lasts through May the 3rd. And then of course we have election day which is May the 7th. So I want to encourage, um, regardless of what your opinion or your vote will be, it's very important that you get out and vote and have your voice heard in this community. I'll be going into a lot more detail, um, doing some presentations around the district, out in the community, uh, at some public events and some meetings. I want to invite all of you to some town hall meetings that we will be having at the Community High School Auditorium. We'll have our first one on March the 22nd. Our second one on April the 6th, our third one on April the 20th. All of these meetings will start at 6 p.m. There will be a presentation of information for you and then also a time to ask questions in person and have discussions on things that you feel are important. Other events are being planned across the district right now and if you want us to present about the bond at your church, your HOA meeting, or any other kind of public event, please contact us at info at communityisd.org and we'll be happy to show up and give you lots of information. So as we're transitioning a little bit here to our first guest, I want to thank um, our, our crew tonight, Mr. Chris and Mr. Cooper, who always make sure we have everything ready to go for our Facebook Live and they keep monitoring the screens and comments and they are uh, wonderful people to have on our team to make sure that we are communicating with our community on things that are going on within the district. Our first guest tonight is actually Cooper Welch, who I was just bragging on a little bit there. And Cooper, we came um, to call you to be here with us tonight because we want to know a little bit more about the success that we had at our job fair. So this last Saturday, we had a job fair for the whole district, invited people in. So tell me a little bit about that. What was the goal? What was the purpose of having that job fair in Community ISD? Well, uh, there were multiple goals having this job fair on campus. Um, of course, we haven't really been able to do something on campus for a long time because of COVID. So first of all, it's just a big celebration of us being able to have in-person events on campus again to show off our buildings. Uh, we do have from the previous bond, the 2017 bond, some amazing facilities and we wanted to show them off. Um, and when teachers and other staff are looking for jobs, of course they want to know what facilities they'd be working in. So we brought it on campus instead of doing the virtual events that we've been doing the last two years to show off the high school, um, something we're really proud of, and to give them a chance to 
if they wanted to, see some other facilities later down the road. Um, and of course, the other goal was to bring in a lot of staff. With all the students coming in, we've got to hire uh, a crazy amount of positions to make sure that uh, class ratios, uh, student to teacher ratios are as low as possible. Um, we also have to have support staff for them, custodians, uh, child nutrition specialists, um, principals, assistant principals, all sorts of stuff that goes into making right. the school work. So because of all the positions we had to hire, we knew we had to have um, a really big place to bring in a lot of people. So the high school worked best uh, for that regard as well. And we were able to bring in um, over 100 people to, to see the high school interview with all of our different campuses and departments. Um, it was a really great event overall. So leading right into my next question, you, you would say that it was a success then? Yes, I think it was a resounding success. Uh, I talked with our Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources and Operations, which is Mr. Nathan Heflin, and uh, his HR team, the Director of HR is Leanne Powell, and the Human Resources Specialist is Mrs. Deanna Robinson. The three of them together told me that they had 113 people show wow. up for the event, and 36 of those were offered jobs, and two more were hired on the spot to wow. start. Uh, the next day or the next week. That's so, amazing. Yeah, really, really amazing. successful event. So do you think that we will do this again? Is this something we have planned for future events? Yes. Um, as, as you know, actually, we talked about it today, what went well and what can we do better. So we already have plans in the works to have at least one more of these every year, maybe even have multiple uh, a school year, one in the fall, one in the spring, whatever we can do. But we want to make sure that we get the good news about Community ISD out and that we have plenty of really uh, good, qualified staff here to help us take care of the students in our church. Good. So we were both there, so we knew we know how exciting it was, and we know all the things that were done, but why don't you share with people kind of the experience? What happened when people got here? Mm -hmm. How were our kids involved? How was our staff involved? What was it really like being there on Saturday? Absolutely. So when a uh, potential job candidate showed up to this job fair. They pulled into the front parking lot of the high school, got out of their car, walked up, and there were all sorts of signs that said, enter here, this is where the job fair is. Um, they came in through the front vestibule of the high school and were immediately greeted by a crew of uh, basketball players, cheer, dance, uh, Stuco, all sorts of high school representatives that welcomed them in, rah rah and cheered, made them feel special. Then they signed in uh, at our table, because we also had a, a contest we were running with our staff. Mm -hmm. Whoever brought in the most referrals, uh, the top three each got a prize that we'll be awarding later. And I'm not going to reveal who those top three were <laughs> okay. right now. It's a secret. Yes, they'll be finding out in a, a special uh, ambush that Chris and I will be doing later when we reveal who they are. So as they signed in, they then were taken by a middle or elementary school student uh, we had over 20 of those students that showed up for this that walked them down Main Street in the high school and up to the cafeteria where each of our five campuses, I had to think about that for a second, five campuses were set up as well as uh, child nutrition, maintenance and transportation. We had a district table, uh, of course an HR table to, to finish these interviews. They then interviewed with the campus representatives and if they were... Um, somebody that we wanted to lock down, they were brought over to the HR table and brought up to you, introduced to you. You would then say something about who they were, what job they had been offered, and you would say, go blue, and everyone else in the uh, cafeteria would say, go Braves, and we'd also be playing Celebration in the background every time there was a... So it was uh, a lot of fun, exciting yes. things happening. Yes, it was a really fun time. That was that's good. It, it was an amazing time, and I think our students deserve some congratulations. Absolutely. They really represented the district well. Mm -hmm. They were positive and enthusiastic, and yeah. and really set the tone when the when the candidates walked in the door. So yes, there's a lot of people that probably didn't get to make the job there, and mm -hmm. we've received some uh, emails of people that really wish they could have come but didn't get to be there. So if they're still interested in working at Community ISD, but they didn't make the job fair, what, what do we need to tell those people to do to, to come be a part of Brave Nation? Absolutely. 
Well, the good news is there's still plenty of job openings. <laughs> That's so true. So <laughs> if you were looking to work in an amazing place with great benefits and competitive salaries, we are looking to hire. So you can go to communityisd.org, and if you scroll down on the main page, you can click on uh, job openings. Uh, we also are going to put the job link in the chat. Um, so if you are looking for a job, just look in our, in our chat right now. Chris just put it in there, I think. And click on that, apply for any positions, and we'll, we'll be hiring for quite a while. So. That's amazing. You know, I just got through telling all of you that we're looking at adding 800 students each year. And when you add 800 students each year, you also have to add lots of staff. So we're adding lots of positions um, to prepare for this growth that we're already seeing. Um, and so we really urge you to apply if you want to come work in Brave Nation or if you know anyone that would be a great addition to Brave Nation, please let them know how they can apply. Send us some information about them and we would love to reach out and get great people here to continue the work that we're doing in Brave Nation. Cooper, thank you so much for being here. Of course. We appreciate you. We'll keep you around, and if they have questions about the job fair later, we'll bring you back over. Yes, ma'am. All right. So as we wait for our next guest to come over and join us, I want to just quickly remind you about tonight's one-act play performance. Our CHS theater team is getting ready for their district competition, and tonight they are previewing their show, Tracks. Tracks will be performed um, at the UIL District Competition on March the 4th, but tonight's show at CHS Auditorium will begin at 6.30. So if you are able to make that, uh, we urge you to come out and support our students in that. So tonight we have our second guest with us. Um, He'll be here. Um, <laughs> Coach Buckner, how are you tonight? I'm doing good. Thank good. you Good. We, we are so glad that you are here. I want to talk to you a little bit about our basketball season at um, Community High School. Coach Buckner was our interim coach for our CHS boys basketball team um, starting in January. And under his guidance, the team won eight of their final nine games. That is amazing to finish out being second in district. So we are so proud of this team. And then we got to go and watch an amazing game. Coach Buckner and his team had a great showing in the playoffs. They forced a Brownsboro team, a good team, into overtime. And it was a wonderful, wonderful game and a great season. We're so glad. Thank you so much that you're here with us tonight to talk about a little bit. Um, I want to ask you a couple of questions, if you don't mind sharing with us a little bit. What did you tell the kids that made them turn around that season and win eight of their last nine games? So the biggest thing for us was uh, that I noticed is we kind of started games off uh, slow and kind of waited and, you know, tried to react to uh, teams and see how they would play. So the biggest thing that I think uh, that we, we kind of all bought into was the motto, start fast, yeah. um, which just basically means start faster than the other team, make them play uh, at your pace, um, and make them match your energy. And so I think the guys really did a good job of uh, doing that, which, I mean, led to us winning eight out of the last nine. Uh, we dropped the first three in district, and then went and rattled off five in a row, uh, lost another one on the second half, and then ended up winning three more right before the playoff game. So start fast was the motto that I think got us going. That's great. And you could definitely see that. You saw them come out with aggression and excitement. I think it caught some people off guard <laughs> yes, when we came out uh, playing fast like that. Was there a particular student athlete on the team that fueled that winning streak, or was it more of a team effort? So I think it was more of a, a team effort more so than anybody. Uh, all of our guys, you know, we, we know who our energy guys are. Um, we have some, some definite energy <laughs> guys on our team, uh, Quentin Hall being one of them. Um, but I think it was fully a team effort because um, everybody actually bought into the whole motto of starting fast. Uh, once I got everybody to kind of just um, realize that, you know, if you start games fast and you play hard and you play together and you talk on defense, uh, things became a lot easier for the team. Uh, we, we made it a lot easier on ourselves and we started getting some steals and being able to go score uh, the ball well in transition. So I think, uh, you know, I think the whole team, it's a team effort and basketball is a team game. So I think, you know, uh, it was a team effort for sure. And I think, you know, just having that energy, you know, they kind of bounce off one another. Good. 
Good. So I was at that playoff game. I was a nervous wreck when we were down <laughs> to that fourth quarter, and it was really, really exciting. So, you know, that fourth quarter was a different quarter than the others. There was a different dynamics on the floor, and there was an urgency that, that you saw with, with everybody out there. What happened in that fourth quarter to increase that urgency with the, with the guys? Yeah, I think, uh, I think part of it was just realizing, one, uh, how much time we had left, um, you know, but – Two, I think you know one of our one of our key players ended up fouling out of the game, and uh, I think the guys really noticed, and they noticed that somebody had to step up. And I think it was a collective team effort. Uh, we got some big plays um, defensively out of out of uh, some different players. I know uh, one that comes to mind for me is River Medlin getting the steal. Mm-hmm. Um, that was that was big for us to where we actually got the ball, um, and he actually shot free throws right at the end of the game, and I think he hit one to tie the game, which right. was big. Uh, which sent us to overtime, but uh, like again, like I said, Q Hall, uh, Bryson Titlow on the defensive end, uh, they're just a different intensity. And I told them uh, during the timeout at the three minute mark, I told them the game's not over, guys. We still got three minutes, and three minutes is a long time, uh, especially in a basketball game with wow. stops and you know just the clock and everything. So um, I just think, you know, I just the biggest thing was telling them that it's not over, and you know you can still play and you can still change the outcome of the game. Great. Well, it was definitely a fun game to watch, an exciting season. So proud of you and, and what you did for us um, as a district and, and proud of each of those guys. They, they represented us well, so Thank I appreciate you. that. So when we're looking for the future, which of our student athletes will be coming back to us next year on the team and which ones are graduating this year? Yeah, so we had four seniors, um, Hudson Thomas, uh, which was our point guard. Uh, he graduates. J.C. Medlin, who was our shooting guard and leading scorer, he graduates. Um, we've got Bryson Titlow, um, who also graduates, and then Tanner Abels, who also graduates. Uh, so we graduate four. Uh, we have six coming back in Jonah Curry, Davis Stanfield, uh, Vincent Bakari, Malik Hunt, River Medlin, and Quentin Hall. So uh, I, there's, a lot, there's a lot to be, uh, be proud of and a lot to look forward to, uh, I think, for sure. And there's uh, a couple of pieces, even on the younger teams, that I think can be uh, pretty well and help us out next year. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for a great season. Thank you for coming tonight and visiting with us. We are so proud of that team and looking forward to good things in the future. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So as we transition again, we'll have our uh, final guest come up and join us. But if you're looking for some more opportunities to cheer on our Braves and be at some exciting events for us, um, Wednesday we have our regional powerlifting in uh, Gainesville. On uh, Wednesday we also have boys and girls soccer against Caddo. I believe the girls will be here at home so we can come out and watch the girls Um, play soccer this Wednesday and then Thursday through Saturday we have our baseball and softball teams both at tournaments check out our district calendar to find out how you can catch those games Friday we have our boys golf team in Garland so good luck to all of those athletes Um, I know that they will represent our district well we have our final guest tonight a new addition to our brave staff Um, she is coming to us as our new Director of Student Services, Miss Natasha Harris. We're so glad that you're here. Um, I hope all of you will join me in welcoming her to Brave Nation all the way from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So, Miss Harris, what made you interested in Community ISD and how did you get to the Beta, Texas from Milwaukee? <laughs> All right, um, so as I was looking at school districts, I noticed that Community ISD was a district that is comprised of several cities, and so it's bringing several communities together. So then I started to research and fi- look at like the diversity that uh, it offers, and then how it really tries to nurture and service n- the students, the parents, and also the staff. And that's kind of where I came from in my background, right. is making sure that I, um, you know, provide all the services that we have for our, for our students that I've worked with, the parents, and then the community so that we build a, like a family together. And I saw that in the district and I wanted to apply and work here. Awesome. Well, we are very glad that you are here and that you found Community ISD. Um, some of the parents out there, community members that are watching this, probably do not know what a student services director does. So tell us a little bit about what your day might look like and what are you responsible for in the district? Okay, so during my day, I 
do look at different things like um, looking at our discipline, um, some of the reports that we have, also our attendance, and um, then I uh, contact um, our, some of our staff, like our administrators, our counselors, and speaking with teachers, and also speaking with parents and students. So being the director of student services, I am, provide, I am that person they can come to to provide not just service, but support. So I can help them with social and emotional needs, if it's positive behavior interventions at the school, getting systems in place so that we um, can build a community at the school and that they have that family feeling at the school as well. And then um, providing resources, not just for students in those services, but trying to eliminate any barriers. So if parents have um, anything they need, I can um, kind of link them to some community resources as well, and also for our, our staff so that they can support our students and our families the, as best they can. So I do work with the counselors, um, like I said, administrators, and then I also um, work with, you know, like uh, improving the attendance, um, work with, you know, like when I say eliminating barriers, sometimes our families have challenges that they face mm -hmm. and that um, keep them from coming to school, but making it a way that they can come to school so that those barriers are taken out of, taken out of their way. Awesome. And you hit the ground running. I think you've been already tasked with many things to kind of look at and improve on. And so we're super excited that you came in and jumped right in to, to doing a great job for us. So as you're getting settled in, um, what would you say is the thing that you miss most about your home state? And then also, what are you loving about the great state of Texas? Okay, so some of the things I miss most about my home state my family, my one, my oldest daughter just had a new baby. Oh, congratulations! Um, so excited about that, so I'll be able to go up and see them later. But I miss my family. I also miss some of my, my colleagues that I had. Um, I still keep in touch, and they help to provide. Uh, um, some supports here, but I um, don't miss the snow. Okay. <laughs> so, well, we kind of fooled you this last yeah, week. Yeah, you did, yeah. you did. So there was not much snow, but it gets quite icy. Yeah. So I'm like, we're closing school, but it's, it's icy, so you can't get on the here. road. But here in Texas, I found like the the community and the kindness that people have and coming together and, um, you know, being in Wisconsin, it's, sometimes it's a little segregated where I live, but it's more diverse and integrated here. And so I feel like people embrace each other a little more. And so I really like that here in Texas. And then I do have family here. So family brought me here. I got engaged and we moved down here to Texas. So. Um, so I still have family, and I'm building up a lot more colleagues here at Community. Good. Well, we are very excited you're here. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Welcome to Brave Nation. It's going to be a you. wonderful experience. I think you're going to love being here. And we can't wait to see some of the things that you do as our Director of Student Services. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Yeah. Have a great evening. Okay. So we're going to switch now to a time when we're going to take questions from you. So if you have questions about any of the presentation that we did, or if you have questions for any of our guests that joined us tonight. We're now going to take those questions and try to elaborate on some of the things that were brought to your attention tonight. So, Chris, do we have anything in the chat so far? Yes, we can start with a question from Christy asking about the 2017 bond, why it didn't last 10 years. Can you explain bond capacity? Sure. So, um, you know, when you're going out for a bond, it's it's always kind of a guessing game about how long things are going to pass. When we first started working on the one that um, is currently out there and um, that's going to be voted on on May 7th, we started talking about a 10-year um, span of when that would last. But what happened as we continued to talk is that our growth projections came in and we're now we're talking in enrollment numbers instead of years because you can't gauge how fast that growth is going to come. The growth is coming to community much faster than anybody including our demographers anticipated and so it's very hard to judge how long it's going to be before you need those other facilities. Also with capacity, you don't want to, um, our financial advisor uh, used an analogy of you don't want to get out over your skis on your financial capacity. You don't want to go out for more money than you have the capacity to pay for. So I think in the 2017 bond election, they went out for what they had the capacity to go out for. 
Um, and then they were able to build the facilities with that amount of money that they had. They couldn't go out for more than that because we didn't have the growth at the at the limit or at the uh, extreme at that point to be able to pay for that additional capacity. So they went out for what our district had the financial capacity to pay for, and they got some amazing facilities with that 2017 uh, bond package. Okay, we'll stay on the topic of the bond and asking about extending the debt and thus increasing people's taxes. I know that's a topic that uh, we discussed recently. Right. So when you when you look at an increase in the taxes, um, what I again want to reiterate is that the 50 cents, which is the part of the tax rate that is used to pay debt, cannot increase. So we are not... Um, increasing if the if this bond passes we will not be increasing the tax rate at all to cover any bond debt and um, with what the the tax rate is right now it was put at 50 cents with the number of houses and the number of taxpayers there were at that time to be able to cover the bond debt that we were going into in 2017 that will still continue we still owe about 27 years on that bond and so those payments will still be being made with that 50 cents but as new homes come into the district those new homes will be paying that 50 cents per hundred dollar valuation of their home. And so when you start adding 7,500 homes at that 50 cents, you begin to generate that additional funds that you can pay off this new bond that's being proposed. So I, I did have a question about whether um, that length of time would be shortened um, if we don't pass this bond. Um, would it be shortened on the number of years it would take us to pay off the previous bond? And I would say it could. However, um, the district would more than likely be continuing to go out for additional bonds for facilities to house students um, or to, to help pay for um, facilities where they can provide um, facilities for our students. Um, without that, um, we again, the plan would be to put portables, which will come out of our M&O side. That's the side we actually pay um, uh, teacher salaries out of and then all of our day-to-day uh, -day operations. So we would pay for all the portables out of that side of our tax uh, base and our funding. And so then we would have to make adjustments to our budgets to be able to buy that. We think about portables, you know, um, just the common person thinks you go down and you buy a portable and it's a real easy thing to do and it's, it's cheap. It's not. When you're talking about housing students, there's lots of restrictions and regulations that you have to follow. There's infrastructure that has to be done in a certain way for the safety um, of our students and so when we talk about that we're talking about uh, millions of dollars per campus um, just to house a, a group of administrators uh, when it, with some portables that we looked at it was going to be between one and two million dollars um, to have that set up so when you start talking about housing kids you're talking about a lot more portable space um, and a lot more infrastructure that has to be put in. So we would add a um, million um, dollars for each of those portables that would be adding to those campuses. Okay. Right now, no more questions, just a few comments. Uh, Jordan commenting, good luck theater. And obviously they are underway right now with tracks. Hate that we're missing it, know, but we can I rush can over and hopefully yeah. get over there for the completion. Uh, Danae Moore also commenting that way to represent Coach Buckner and the Braves will get them next year. Obviously, the road to state will uh, be will be excited about it, considering the guys that are coming back next season, uh, like Coach Buckner mentioned. And then a welcome to Brave Nation for Miss Harris. Uh, how amazing an addition she is to our our team here. Uh, and that is all we have right now for comments and questions. I could always bring back Coach Buckner and talk hoops with him for hours. <laughs> but, uh, we'll, we, we will leave it at that. They and, uh, were fun to watch, for sure. Definitely fun to watch. Any more questions you guys have out there about um, the bonds or about any of our guests that were here tonight, we're happy to do that. Again, I encourage you to reach out to us with any questions that you have and also attend any of our public events or our town halls to get more detailed information about um, some of the things that are in the bond proposal and how that bond proposal will affect um, our district. And I'm putting the town hall meetings up on the screen again right now. You can mark these down on your calendar to join us on March 22nd 
April 6th or April 20th. And there'll be other opportunities to visit with Dr. Knowlton at other events around town uh, for the next little while as well. I know you have a busy calendar coming yes. up. Yes, yes, very busy. We've got some things scheduled at different um, campuses, different social events throughout the district. We've also got some things out in just in the community as well as visiting some of our new neighborhoods um, and speaking with some HOAs and, and trying to get the word out there as much as possible on what the facts are uh, with our bond. I, I do want to say regardless of the way that you will vote yes or no on the bond, we encourage you to really get out there and vote. Your voice is important. We have a growing community and everybody needs to have a voice in what's happening in the district. So we encourage you to get out there and vote um, on May 7th or during the um, early voting time. All right, and we'll take a question from Lacey asking, do teacher salaries decrease if the bond doesn't pass? <clears throat> so I, I can't really answer that exactly because I don't know where we'll be financially on um, how that will work. I can tell you that with 75% of our MNO budget being for salaries, if we're having to start taking millions from that um, side of the budget to start allocating to facilities for students, then we will have to look at staffing and whether that means um, decreasing the number of staff or decreasing um, salaries that are there. We'll just have to look at what can we do to make that M&O side of the budget be able to cover the facilities. The one thing we can't do, and I've been asked this question before, at what point can we just stop and close the door? And the answer is never. So um, in the state of Texas, we're re we are required to take in and educate every student that lives in our district. And as those students come into our district and establish a residency here, we have the responsibility to educate them. And so we can't turn the kids away. So then we will just have to manipulate our budget to be able to have enough space to put kids. We do know that with the new projections, just to let you guys know, being very transparent about this, that our new projections so that Nee Smith Elementary will open the doors next year at over 800 students. We don't have enough space within the building at Neesmith to be able to house 800 students. So we are planning to place some portable buildings uh, at Neesmith to be able to have all of our students there. Our new Roderick Elementary is supposed to open at over 700 students and our McClendon Elementary will also open at over 700. Those buildings were built for 750 students. So they'll be very near capacity in that first year. On our second year, Roderick will be over capacity as well as McClendon. Okay, question from Jordan. With the 1,200 homes that are coming over the next seven to 10 years, does that mean that the MO taxes will eventually decrease over time as that debt is being paid off? So M&O, no. The M&O side is our maintenance and operation. That's the side that's just our general budget. That tax rate is set with um, the, the state, the Texas Education Agency. So that's a whole different ballgame there. Our other side, which is our 50 cents debt capacity, could decrease if our debt decreases. You can decrease um, that amount, but that would mean no future debt um, to be able to pay that. Now, if you have enough homes within the district that it's a, you're a, you have enough um, houses here and enough commercial or retail that is bringing in additional tax dollars in this district, then you could look at a possibility of decreasing um, that 50 cents. 50 cents is the, um, the highest level on the INS side that you can go. Most fast growth districts, and that's what we're considered right now, is a fast growth district. Most fast growth districts in the state of Texas are all at that 50 cents because they are continually having to build new facilities to make room for the students that we're getting to enroll. Okay. Right now we're clear on questions. Just a couple of follow-ups from what you've already addressed. And again, we put Dr. Knowlton's email address in the chat so you can reach out to her at any time. Yeah, I'd be happy to talk to anyone. I've had a couple of um, community members that were interested or had questions or didn't quite understand or didn't agree with something they had heard to come and sit down and have a meeting with me. I'm very open to that. I would love to hear what some of the, the questions are, some of the understanding of what's going on. It actually helps me to better inform and better communicate with people if I know what uh, what concerns there are out there. So I would 
welcome anyone to set up a meeting with me or a phone call with me. I'd be happy to sit down and talk about any of this individually. Last thing I think we can cover is when we expect to release rezoning for the elementary schools. So we're currently looking at um, where those zones will be, and, and I'm going to be very transparent in what's happening with that right now. Um, we are trying to secure some land in both the west side of the district and the east side of the district. We're currently in negotiations for um, uh, land for future sites of the district. And so um, as we're doing that, we're trying to make sure that we zone our elementary so that we don't have to make kids move every year. And so we're trying to really make sure we know where future elementaries might be before we show where the zones are going to be for Roderick Elementary. So uh, what we don't want to do is set it up where if the bond passes and we are building new campuses, that we're not making a kid move from elementary to elementary each year because we've not taken into consideration future zoning. So we are planning, we've already started kind of some options on what zoning might look like. And so we'll keep looking at those options and we plan to release those before we leave for school um, this year. So I would say middle May, um, we will have all those projections out so that you will know where everyone is zoned for next year. Okay, I think that'll do it for questions. And again, Dr. Knowlton's email address is in the chat, so reach out anytime. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I always love these. I think it's a great way for the district to connect with our community. We are open to any questions, any suggestions, any comments that you have, so please make sure that you share those with us. And if we can help you in any way, that's why we're here. Thank you so much for being a part of tonight, and I look forward to doing this again next month.